I'm Max Sheldon here and thanks for tuning in. We're going to show you some ways that you can customize a mortise and tenon template to fit a specific need. Now when we've designed our segmented mortise and tenon template set, we figured there's no way that anyone is ever going to need anything besides what could be offered with this set. I mean, we have 154 different sizes of mortise and tenon that you can cut using this set just by changing the segments and the end pieces. We can go from just under one inch up to over six and a quarter inches in quarter inch increments widthwise, and we can cut eighth inch, quarter inch, five sixteenths, three eighths, half inch, three quarter, and one inch mortise and tenon. What more would a guy want? Well, every once in a while there is a specific need. In this case, our, one of our customers had a contractor, has a contract, to cut the uh, tenons on the ends of bed rails, hundreds of them. And they had to be exactly 4 and 5 eighths inches long by 23 30 seconds inch thick. Well, we can get to 4 and 5 eighths inches long using our 3 quarter inch set, but it wouldn't cut 23 30 seconds and get the same 4 and 5 eighths inches on the width. So we're going to show you how we modified the template in order to accomplish his requirement. We know that in order to get the intended tenon width that we need to multiply two times the width plus the bit minus the guide bearing size. And in order to do that, the easiest thing to do is to convert it all to metric and then we can use whole numbers to, uh, to calculate the size. In this case, 4 and 5 eighths inches converts to 117.475 millimeters and the 23.30 seconds is 0 0.71875 millimeters. Now we got whole numbers that we can plug into our calculation. In order to accomplish this, we decided to use two of the uh, end pieces that are marked with triangles, which would normally give us inch and a quarter if we were using the half inch bit and the appropriate guide bearing. But that's not what we're doing. In our calculations, we decided to use the large 35 millimeter guide bearing and a 9 16 inch bit. So we did the calculations, we determined the total width that we needed. We're mocking this up, um, and uh, you notice that we do have a little bit of a gap between these, these template sections, and that ended up to be quite okay, especially just for a proof of concept, because the circumference of our guide bearing is great enough that it spans that gap, and since anything on the template is translated at half scale to the workpiece, that tiny little gap, even if there were a slight depression, it had, it's minuscule and you absolutely can't feel it on the workpiece itself. So we've proven the size that we need. Now measuring from the inside of the this end piece to the inside of this end piece, we're, we get 154 0.58 millimeters. So that's what we're going to cut our straight piece to and we're going to center that on the centering hole and that way the, our customer will be able to very easily put this back in the center anytime they want to recreate this exact cut. We're going to use the little tannin on the back of our template uh, to keep everything straight and centered and in order to do that, I'm going to need to have a groove in, my, uh, in the bottom piece of my jig. And I can set up the table saw to cut it, but unfortunately, this is about um, a 32nd of an inch over the kerf of my table saw blade. So rather than having to move it back and forth, um, I'm going to instead use a couple of, of pieces of thin material. This is eighth inch Baltic ply, and I'll just uh, locate that and squeeze those together. And then um, that, that will form the groove that I need to capture the tenon for my template. Now, just before I uh, cut these and glue it all down, 
uh, there's two other little tricks that I want to use. One is that I'm going to use a guide bearing in the center to align everything. And in order to use that, I need to have a hole in the, uh, in the bottom part of my jig. And the second thing is that I want this whole assembly to be lined up such that, kind of simulated here, such that when my back piece of the jig is located, the whole thing will register and keep everything aligned uh, at, this, at this juncture. So the first thing I'll do is to go in and drill this hole. I'll use the drill press and a six millimeter bit to make that six millimeter hole. Before I drill the hole in this location, I mark my two side pieces and I'm going to squeeze them together at the, uh, over the hole and then drill through the whole assembly. And that way I'll have a clearance hole when I'm finished for the uh, guide bearing to go all the way through. So a little quick and thick and we'll be able to uh, uh, get this glued down real quickly and easily. We're just going to uh, generally align it and then I'll show you how we're going to square this exactly. I set up the L tomato L fence from Chuckstone Woodworking and now I'm going to uh, cut right to the edge of my template and uh, using the L fence uh, to index it. Use a push block. Okay, so now we've got a perfectly aligned uh, piece that I can then mount my the back of my uh, jig to, and it'll hold everything in perfect alignment. So I built my little jig. It's got the centering hole for the six millimeter guide bearing and the groove for my template. So I'll use the guide bearing in the center hole and press that down into the template. Now you notice that I left the uh, the jig a little bit um, shy of the end of my template. And that way I can locate my template relative to the edge of the saw blade. And once I have that fixed, uh, clamp that down and then locate that. And then I know that, that this bar is 202 millimeters wide and I want my overall width of the bar to be 154.58 millimeters. Therefore, it's a uh, 47.42 millimeter difference, and I divide that by two is 23.71 millimeters per side. So I'm going to uh, use a piece of double stick tape and stick my caliper down to the, um, for zeroed out, stick my caliper down to the, uh, press it onto my base. And now I'm all set up so that I'll pull this back, move the whole assembly over by 23.71 millimeters, 3.71. Okay, so I'm exactly right there. See if I can lock that down carefully. Now gently move back to contact it. Make sure I'm square, yep. Okay, so now I'm just gonna clamp this and cut at that point. So I like to use a little block right where the saw is going to cut so that this little piece isn't gonna go flying off. So here we go, dust collection. Now, without moving my fixture, uh, I'm going to turn the template bar. So pull the uh, pin out and lift that up, turn it around. 
centering pin back in. Make sure I get it in the right hole. We've got multiple holes in this straight piece. Okay, clamp it down. And now the moment of truth. We're supposed to be 154.58 millimeters. So there's a little bit of uh, rough on the end and I'm 154.59, uh, nope, 0.58. So we're right on. Perfect. By the way, my dust collector wasn't on. Okay, so we'll measure this and see how close we can get. The spec was for four and five eighths by 23 30 seconds. We nailed it. Before I take this, this all apart, you notice that there's an additional six millimeter hole that I'm going to use a pin to locate this whole jig assembly. So if I ever need to make this exact size again, um, I'll have that hole to reference it. So I'll go ahead and drill through. I, I made this on the drill press, so I'll use that as a guide. Kind of go backwards to get it started through there. don't really need to drill through my my table saw sled okay so we'll press that in and that next time will bring me exactly to this position and I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to mark this hole with the size this this size that it's supposed to be for this customer actually needed two of these, uh, one at four and five eighths for this tenon, and the other one at four and nine sixteenths for this tenon. So they're very slightly different, but we made uh, a slight adjustment and have set this up, and we'll drill an additional hole in our um, uh, in our jig so that we can go back to either the four and five eighths or the four and nine sixteenths at will. And in both cases, I mark these uh, using an engraver so that there's a little triangle here that'll remind the operator to use the triangle section from our segmented mortise and tenon template set. And uh, the triangle on each end plus this center piece to uh, make four and nine sixteenths. With my indexing holes, the next time I want to set up for four and five eighths, I'd slip this through and find that hole. Mount a template using the centering hole and make make my cut. Just that simple. Four and nine sixteenths. Just move it over to the four and nine sixteenths hole and make my cut. Thanks again for tuning in and thanks for sticking with us to the end of this. I know it's a little bit dry, but I hope you picked up something, some little uh, tip or trick that might be useful for you. We see the Panda Router as kind of an open source platform and we'd really like to be able to uh, see how you use your Panda Router in unusual ways. You know, how you customize something or make a jig that, uh, that functions in a specific way for your work. Um, we, we love to see photos, we love to see video, um, and we love the questions, we love to help people on FaceTime um, or Zoom. 
reach out to us. We're here for you and we, we love to interact with our customers. So happy pan routing.